So my name is Maria Laitinen. I am a Finnish lawyer. I started my Microsoft journey a long time ago. I'm actually one of the veterans. I've been at Microsoft since January 2000. So it's 25 years next January. And uh, I am an IP lawyer by education. Intellectual property rights and copyrights are close to my heart. I have been leading the Microsoft Digital Crimes Unit um, for three years as our business models changed. I moved from fighting um, intellectual property crimes to fighting cybercrime, which of course is, a, is an important topic um, across the world now when we are more and more digital in our lives that we want to protect against the criminals. And now, as the latest change in my career, I have become responsible for our agenda um, on responsible AI governance and AI governance and partnerships across Europe, Middle East and Africa. Could you explain what responsible AI governance is to somebody who haven't maybe heard the I think, I think it's important to first think about AI as a whole, because some people, they're still kind of like, what is this AI? So, so I think to start with, AI really is the computer's ability to mimic kind of the human-like functions, to reason, to learn, to make decisions, which is, of course, something that is new. And in this, it is important that when we talk about what is responsible, we talk about the ethics that come on top. It shouldn't be that the machines are deciding what they do. We need to ensure that there is a human in the loop. And in all of this, when we think about the ethics, we need to have a governance model, like we have governance models for many, many technologies that can be used either as tools for good or weapons. And this is one of those technologies. So as part of the responsible AI approach that we have applied at Microsoft, we have created our responsible AI principles that talk about fairness, first of all. It's important that this technology is treating everyone in the same way, that it's not biased and some people are getting worse results or worse tools and worse benefits out of this than others. Can I intercept you here? Yes. Because that's very interesting what you're saying. And how do you ensure that fairness in your technology? Well, that means that we need to test it. When we are, sometimes when you think when we train AI tools, they are trained on data. And of course, the data that you put in determines what is the outcome. So if your data is biased, if your data is not fair, if your data is giving you know, horrible examples, then AI, the generated AI will do the same. So we need to test, put filters in to ensure, and that testing will continue throughout the life cycle of these products and services to ensure that the outcome is fair. And what are the other principles that you established? There is more. First of all, um, Privacy, of course, is very important. We want to keep that. And security. As I said, you know, I've been fighting cybercrime across actually Central and Eastern Europe first and then in EMEA. It's important that those are kept, that our data remains private and secure. There is also inclusiveness, meaning all, all the people will need to have access to this information and technology so that they can leverage it. Um, safe and secure, safe and reliable, those are words that you know we repeat all the time. Safe, secure and trustworthy, these are the type of concepts that we implement when we are developing, designing, developing and deploying these products. And then finally, I think the most important one or two that are most important one are there is transparency. People need to know when they're dealing with machines. They need to know when there is artificial intelligence and when there is human intelligence in the loop. And then at the same time, they also need to know what are the capabilities of this technology? What are the limitations? So we need to be very transparent about this technology when people are using it so that they know how and where it's appropriate to use. And then the final, the accountability. We cannot have machines be accountable. 
you know, if something goes wrong, it's not the machine's fault. There needs to be always the human who is accountable for that system and taking the responsibility. Microsoft is a global company. I'm curious, how do you see the differences on different markets and different law structures and regulations in terms of actually implementing those principles that you mentioned? This is a very good question because ever since everybody remembers in November 2022 when ChatGPT all of a sudden kind of brought AI into everybody's awareness, that's when everything started. Of course, AI is not new, it has been going on for a long time, and these governance models, including AI Act in Europe, that is now the EU AI Act, that is the first set of horizontal rules that is going to be, um, I think it was just today, it went through the last legal hurdle, so we expect that it will be enforced sometime in June, and then six months after that, it will start to be enforced. That's a model, that's, a, that's an attempt for EU to regulate and govern AI. But there are many other countries. There is China, there is, the, there is US, Canada, India, Japan. There's many, many countries that are looking at this and trying to find the right way. The truth is, I don't think there is one set thing. We're all learning. The technology is still, the implementation is fairly new in the, companies and people. So I would say that we need to wait and see, you know, what model finally brings the best out of the innovation and at the same time is able to mitigate the many risks. But one thing is clear, there is also this week we have we have an international meeting going on in Korea, the AI Safety Summit that is continuance for a meet, similar meeting in UK where both the governments as well as the tech sector are meeting and coming together to ensure that the governance would be safe, secure, trustworthy. So I would say that there are different ways. Time will tell what's the best way to govern AI, but there is global consensus that it needs to happen. But do you have like your own personal kind of first or maybe even an opinion of what the regulation should look like? I think, you know, my personal is very much aligned with what we are trying to do at Microsoft. We actually published already a year ago when the, when the let's say the debate was the hottest, um, our AI governance blueprint recommendations. And I think we have five key principles in there. The first one would really be that AI needs to be controlled by a framework. It need, there needs to be a governance framework. And sometimes we shouldn't be looking to start from scratch. The NIST, National Institute for Standards and Technology in the US has been thinking about this for a long time. So they came up with the framework and of course, Microsoft and many other companies felt that the, that are developing this technology were giving their input in the process. So we have a framework that we have been applying to our responsible AI principles and strategy. Then we need to have guardrails, we need to have brakes. If the system goes crazy and all of a sudden starts doing something that it should not do, there needs to be that human in the loop and we need to be able to stop it. So there needs to be safety brakes. There needs to be international law. If everybody's doing their own little laws, AI doesn't know borders, so we need to come together. There needs to be global international regulation on top of the standards, on top of the national laws, like the EU AI Act, so we need to come together for that. And if you were to give advice to smaller companies, how should they approach implementing AI and creating solution based on AI to do it in a responsible and ethical way? What would that be? I think it's an important question. And for that reason, we, of course, as Microsoft, we have a huge team that is thinking about this and we're developing the technology. We've been looking at this issue for eight years. We've been building our responsible AI strategy. What we're doing is we are giving customers commitments, first of all, from our side on sharing what we have learned. So our responsible AI standard 
which could be kind of the law book before the regulations are fully in swing, we can't wait. We need to self-govern until that. So we have that responsible AI corporate standard, which we share online. We have, how do we assess the impact of different services and products? We share our impact assessment tool and the guide on how to do that. And then we share our transparency notes for these products and services so people can go and say, ah, oh, what are the limitations? What are the capabilities of this service? And they can follow our leads, you know, basically that follows the NIST risk management framework. There's many of the standards that are going to come out, but that is one way that we can help customers on their responsible AI path and learn together because we can't say this is the only way to do it, but we are sharing our example. Great, thank you very much. Thank you.